Hello everyone, so in this video I want to show you guys how to quickly and uh, um, effectively repair a chip on your fairly expensive um, kitchen knife. If you look closely, uh, it's really hard to tell but there's a chip near the, um, the tip of the knife and the knife itself is not pointy anymore. So uh, what I'm going to try to do today is use a whetstone and just sand the whole um, the whole length of the knife and then try to get rid of the um, the chip over here and also the knife itself it's it's fairly dull um, I actually bought this knife used and uh, um, the seller said it's sharp but it's actually not as sharp um, so we're gonna actually just go ahead and fix those two problems and also um, if you notice when they did the factory sharpening they didn't leave much of the, um, you can't really see the angle that they sharpened the knife compared to a, you know, a regular knife that's being sharpened with this stone. So this looks like a machine sharpened knife. Uh, now we're going to use the hand to actually properly sharpen it to a 12 to 15 degree angles for best cutting performance uh, for this Shun uh, Hikari 6 inch um, kitchen uh, chef's knife. So. We're gonna go ahead and start. And also, I mentioned at the very beginning that we are doing this on a budget because I have a um, twelve-dollar <laughs> whetstone. Uh, it's a uh, it's a it's a combination whetstone with four hundred grit and with a thousand grit. I've actually already used the, used this to sharpen at least three knives to fairly sharp status, so I know this should work and uh, um, it would most definitely help to use the 400 grit to get rid of the initial um, initial bump or initial um, uh, gap over there. So um, again, you have to soak the whetstone in the water for about five to 10 minutes until it's, uh, it's fairly well soaked. And then you find a non-gripping uh, mat and just put it on the bottom. Non-slipping. A non-slipping mat and just put it on the bottom of the uh, this little cheap IKEA uh, container that I bought from IKEA <laughs> and uh, so I set it up like that so later on when I need to add water I just open it up and then put some water on top and continue sharpening so we're actually just gonna go ahead and start um, so basically I'm just gonna do the basic sharpening motion back and forth and let's see, oh, yep, yeah, this is 400, so that's fine. Then we do. So make sure you apply a even force on all areas of your knife. And also keep in mind that this is a SG2 steel, so it's actually much harder uh, than regular standard steel, so it's gonna take longer to probably sharpen the knife and remove that little gap over there on the tip. So I think I'm gonna just work on the tip first or concentrate on working on the tip. And again, like um, to get that angle, just leave your pinky over here and that's a good uh, 15 degree angle somewhere over there. So just keep the angle like that. You can go a little bit lower so it's probably like around 10 to 9 degrees, which is also fine, but just make sure your angle is consistent the entire length of the knife when you actually try to uh, try to sharpen the knife. And because this shape is a fairly interesting shape, I have to be really careful when I'm doing this kind of rocking motion to just make sure all sides or all areas are evenly sharpened. And this is actually going to take a while, so I am going to just fast forward this um, sharpening process until I can show you guys that that little gap is gone. Then we can continue on the further sharpening with the uh, southern grit uh, uh, sandstone or uh, whetstone. The stone is a little dry now, I'm going to add a little more water and just keep it slightly moisture and then just continue doing this.
And some people also do this back and forth, which is a different method. I mean, everybody does this uh, sharpening process very differently. Just find a method that best fits, um, fits your sharpening style and you should be good. And before you're doing this on a very expensive knife, I would suggest you also practice on a few less expensive knives first. So for example, like I sharpened those Ikea knives before and now I get a pretty good hand of how the sharpening stone works and how it feels. So I can confidently just go ahead and try to fix this uh, Hikari knife back to its uh, glory. And again, this, uh, this whole setup of the sharpening box, water, or the stone is just really cheap. This is the whole setup is less than $20. And the knife itself is, uh, is like at least $160. So I should have used a more expensive sharpening stone, but you gotta work with what you have. Okay, so I really don't want to bore you guys with the sharpening, you know, action because it's basically very repetitive going back and forth. But this is after running the um, running the light knife through 400 grit sand, uh, the whetstone, and uh, both sides. Now you can see there's a nice looking uh, set and finished like edge, knife edge around the entire knife. Um, so that's good. Actually, if you look closely, that little gap over there, the chip over there is gone completely. So now I can go ahead and already flip the stone to a thousand and I'm going to go ahead and just uh, sharpen on the 1000 stone and get it to fairly sharp uh, to be able to be usable. All right, again, just uh, make sure you keep your whetstone. Um, Moist, always have water on top. If it gets too dry, just add more water. And then again, it's that same back and forth motion, 45 degree angle. Some people prefer a different angle, but I always go like that. And just go with the flow, go with the edge of the knife and turn as necessary. So again, also, make sure your angle is correct. You can always use your pinky. And some sharpening stones actually came with, uh, with a guide. You can use that guide as well. But I think at this point, I actually have my angle kind of nailed down for my personal preference. And really, this is the time-consuming job, so have plenty of time reserved for this. Anytime you feel like you need a little zen, uh, just come here and sharpen a knife. Add some more water. Anytime you, it sounds dry, just add water. Make sure your gliding action is nice and smooth. And just glide away. So somehow my last footage uh, for the sharpening of the Shin Hikari actually got lost. Um, so I'm just remaking this uh, conclusion video. And this is after the knife has been sharpened. And uh, I did a little bit of the treatment. I just wiped the, the thing with a little mineral oil. And uh, so the, the hand grip looks really nice and well oiled and soaked. And uh, the blade uh, looks nice and shiny. Um, I always just wipe my uh, knives with mineral oil to keep them in good condition. So just gonna show you guys really quick on the edge of the knife. Not sure if it's gonna focus properly, but here you go. So as you can see, that little chip is completely gone. And right now the knife is really sharp. I can just sharp. Uh, I can just cut through any paper, piece of paper, without any issues. And it cuts tomatoes super super nicely. So 
basically this is how you sharpen a knife uh, with a $12 whetstone. So you don't really need those expensive whetstones to sharpen a knife to get them into perfect performing condition. Um, $12 whetstone would do just fine, okay? So if you guys have any questions about um, how to sharpen the knife as a beginner, feel free to discuss with me since I'm also a beginner. And uh, there's really, again, a no wrong way of sharpening the knife. As long as you keep a good angle going back and forth, your knife is gonna be sharp. Uh, don't really mind or just don't matter what other people are telling you that you're doing wrong or things like that. There's no wrong way of sharpening the knife. One thing I do want to mention is when you sharpen the knife that have uh, around the neck of the knife, you need to be really careful of trying to avoid this area hitting the uh, the whetstone because it's gonna chip your knife, uh, at least it's gonna chip this area. I think they call it the bolster area, like right away. Um, and it's gonna leave some scratches. As you can see, uh, that's what happened to me when I was trying to sharpening the knife too close to the, um, the bolster area. So if you're sharpening the back end of the knife, be really, really careful not to uh, scratch your knife. Um, but really it's mostly cosmetic as long as your blade edge is sharp then I would say this is a perfectly functioning beautiful knife to have okay so questions comments feel free to ask me and uh, thank you so much for watching and uh, hope you found this video helpful if you did please do hit the uh, like button or just subscribe and uh, I should have more similar content uh, coming out for you guys okay so thanks again and uh, take care